Good evening. My name is Vignesh Warenwarka, anak lelaki Vivekanantan, and my student ID is 116-110-1896. Today, I will be presenting a research commentary about the topic of formal approaches. As a preface, the word formal here means using formulas or mathematical expressions. Formal approaches, which is also known as formal methods or formal techniques, were introduced as mathematically based techniques, and they are often supported by reasoning tools which offer rigorous and effective ways to model, design, and also analyze computer systems. Formal methods provide notations, sorry, notations for software specification and development with mathematical meaning. Each of these specifications are then associated with a mathematical entity. According to Spichkova and Zemansky, one aim of formal methods is to prove or automatically evaluate behavior properties of a system in a systematic way which is based on a mathematical theory. In their study, they stated that we as software developers are mainly concerned in the formal method's soundness and correctness, but we don't usually take into account aspects such as readability, usability, or tool support. The downside of this is that it might lead to formal methods being perceived as theoretically important but too hard to understand and use. This could be due to a few factors two examples of which that can be most notably seen in computer science students and graduates are cultural background and mathematical background. The education received by computer scientists would greatly affect how well they would be able to understand formal methods according to Spichkova and Zemansky. Formal approaches can be used at a few number of levels. To simplify, Level 0 is when formal specification might be undertaken to develop a program from it informally. Level 1 is when formal development and formal verification may be used to produce a program in a formal manner. Whereas in level 2, theorem provers may be used to undertake fully formal machine checked proofs. Some uses of formal approaches are in specification, development, verification, validation, and many more. In this presentation, I will not be going through them all, but will instead go through some interesting and notable instances in which formal methods were applied in the software development cycle. Formal approaches can be useful in requirements analysis, specification, verification, and validation. As an example, Frey and Litz conducted a study which applied formal methods for verification and validation in programmable logic controller programming, which involve multiple approaches, formalisms, and methods. They hypothesized that industrial PLC programming, which had its own design methods, such as that shown on screen right now, would benefit greatly and be further supported with the use of formal methods due to the increasing demand for higher quality solutions, the growing complexity of control problems, and a higher demand for reduced development time. Here is a detailed design process with formal specifications and the methods which have been put forward. Similarly, Suri and Sena have also conducted a study to develop techniques which support formal techniques for verification of protocols. They attempted this through the generation of very specific fault injection experiments and have concluded that verification and validation techniques during their study were limited in handling large state space in high dependability operations. Thus, they introduce a new approach to fault injection-based validation, which extends the domain of formal techniques beyond verification to generate validation strategies for dependable operations.
Now that we have gone over the meaning of formal approaches and how it could be used, I will now go into how it can impact software engineering, software quality assurance, requirements engineering, and validation of requirements. Firstly, Versing and NAP in their 1996 study regarding formal approaches to object-oriented software engineering have attempted to show how formal approaches can be integrated into pragmatic software development methods. They attempted this by combining Jacobson's object-oriented software engineering with object-oriented algebraic specifications. The result is that any diagram can be associated with a formal specification. Proof obligations that ensure invariant properties can be automatically generated. And the refinement relations between documents on different levels of abstractions can be formally stated and proved. They call this new method Formal Object-Oriented Software Engineering, or FOOSE. In the case of software quality assurance, Ahmed had brought forward a few formal approaches to SQA in his 2011 study, which are proof of correctness, statistical quality assurance, and the clean room process. Proof of correctness means treating a program as a mathematical object, where we attempt to develop a mathematical proof that a program conforms exactly to its specification. Statistical quality assurance is when an attempt is made to trace each defect to its underlying cause. The clean room process, on the other hand, is the use of statistical quality control and formal program verification to attempt to prevent defects rather than find them. According to Ahmed, these methods could possibly increase the quality of products which are turned out. Next, formal approaches have also been used in requirements engineering. In a 2005 study, Itani and Logripo have stated that despite the increasing popularity of graphical modeling systems, their semi-formal nature can lead to a major handicap due to the lack of precise semantics. This is where formal methods are able to come in. They have put forward two approaches, the first of which is to define formal semantics of the graphical notation, while the second is combining graphical notation with formal specification languages. In this study, they have decided to go with the second approach by formalizing the behavior tree notation and integrating it with the alloy formal specification language. In the case of validation, on the other hand, Semati, Roveri, Susi, and Toneta propose a new and comprehensive approach for the validation of functional requirements of hybrid systems in which discrete and continuous components are tightly intertwined. Their proposed solution allowed them to tackle problems of conversion from informal to formal. They accomplished this by building on a new language, which is called Othello, and proposed a structured methodology in which informal requirements are fragmented and categorized according to their role. These fragments are then formalized based on their category in which specialized formal analysis techniques are applied. Other than that, formal approaches can also serve another purpose, which may help in re-engineering legacy systems. In his 1997 study, one attempted to re-engineer legacy systems and ensure that the new systems maintain the same functionalities as their ancestors while also exploiting newer technologies. This is done by reverse engineering an application from code to a higher level abstraction through the use of formal methods. The higher level abstraction is then re-implemented on a new platform. 
He has also stated that the use of formal methods in specifying requirements helps in eliminating unambiguousness while enhancing confidence in consistency and correctness. Finally, Jones, Hayes and Colvin had stated in their 2015 study that notations which are too weak can mean that useful properties either cannot be expressed or their expression would be unnatural. They have stated that without the use of formal methods, Developing sequential programs which satisfy their specifications is difficult. We have just gone through some of the uses of formal approaches in the software development world and how it could positively impact it. From coming up with new ways to solve problems in pragmatic software development methods, assisting in software quality assurance, creating graphical notations with precise semantics in requirements engineering, helping in the validation of requirements, and even in re-engineering legacy systems. Formal approaches are able to greatly assist software developers. That being said, we have arrived towards the end of my presentation. In conclusion, as stated in the studies that we have gone through earlier, formal approaches are a useful tool which has been and will continue to greatly assist software engineers to create high-quality software. It also will greatly assist us during the development process, be it in requirements analysis, specification, verification, and even validation. It has the capacity to improve not only the final output, but also make it easier for developers during the development process, save costs in the long run, prevent major bugs in their software, and ensure the quality of software is held to a high standard. Despite that, it still has the downside of possibly being too hard to understand or use. This is because few developers have the essential training to implement this model. This is especially so in the case of people who don't have a solid background on mathematics and have not received a thorough education in computer science. It also can often be time consuming and expensive in certain cases since it might be harder to use it as a model of communication for non-technical personnel. Here are the citations for the studies that I have referred to while creating this presentation. The figures that I have used in this presentation are also taken from them. I hope that you are able to take away some new knowledge from my presentation and possibly use or implement this knowledge for yourself in the future. Thank you for listening and have a good day.